video today, I'm going to prove to you that Saturday and Sunday worship is an abomination. Not only that, but the Roman calendar is completely false. It has nothing to do with the Creator's point in time. Now, you may be asking before I begin this video today, it's teaching all the things we're going to go through and the evidence. Why is this so important? We're living in the last generation, and very soon, the first beast of Revelation, which if you study closely, and that would be for a separate topic, that's the Roman Catholic Church. The second beast of Revelation is America. Very soon, this entity, the one that I'm standing in right now in America, is going to force the whole world to worship the image of the beast, okay? Well, we'll find <clears throat> that if you study Scripture, that the calendar that we're on right now is a product of Rome. Um, it plain, she plainly says that's her mark, okay? It's Sunday worship. Now, a lot of people might be like, well, that's why we worship on Saturday. Well, what I'm going to explain to you today, though, we're going to go through history on the board here, books, information from the computer, and you're going to see that if you do your own due diligence study, you'll find that Saturday worship and Sunday worship, the day of the sun, neither one of these are in concordance with the scripture nor are they the Sabbath of anything, and that the calendar is an abomination because the Creator's calendar begins with one new moon to another. Okay, and one Sabbath to another, just as Isaiah 66 goes. Now, I challenge any parishioner, pastor, priest, the Pope, the man of sin himself, anyone out there to try to turn around and reprove to their people these false days that they so gladly tote. Because I promise you that if you take the information that I show you today, study it diligently, you'll see that this, all this garbage that you've been taught all your life is false. So with that said, let's begin. <clears throat> Now, there are all the notes, uh, links to the notes and stuff I'm going over, you can um, find in the video description below. Also, there's two links right here that I encourage you to check out. It's the Cre Restoring the Creator's Calendar, the Foundation of Many Generations that we created at Loud Cry Ministries long ago. And also, you can check out this new video link right there about the prophecies of Daniel um, and the uh, final generation and how that it relates to the Creator's Calendar and everything at worldslashchance.com. You can check out those links right there. They're also in the video description below. Now, to begin with, what we have to understand is that long ago, okay, long ago, there was only two calendars. There was the Creator's appointed times, and there was those of Rome. There has always been Rome, pretty much, okay, when it comes to timekeeping against the uh, principles of the Most High. The first, ooh, good segue. The first thing that we're going to go over is the Fasti Antiates Maoris. Okay, now this was an eight-day lunisolar Roman calendar. Okay, it went A through H. You can check this out online. Link is in the video description below. Okay, and this was actually how it was marked off on the calendar. Okay, they had eight-day week and the eighth day was a market day. Okay, this is the pretty much how it went in conjunction down through the thing. <clears throat> Keep in mind this was Looney Solar. Okay. Now the creator's appointed calendar is Looney Solar, but it begins with every new moon. Okay. And the uh, calendar keeping of Rome pretty much from this time forward you'll see is always solar. Okay. There there's the difference with the creator's timing. But even though this was Looney Solar, it looked a lot like the creator's appointed times. But it's not. It was eight day week. So the Creator's calendar, even though it was Looney Solar, would have floated through the Roman calendar. So Satan's always kind of tried to mingle truth with error. And so the way that you can look this up is right here. Fasty. Okay, sorry. Forgive me, I'm not too great with an expo marker. This is a new adaptation of teaching on this channel. So we're going to see how this works out. And I don't know how long this video is going to run, um, but I hope it's a help to those who watch it. Now that is Fasti Antiates Maoris. All right, now that's how you need to look it up if you're going to Google it. <clears throat> you can get a lot of pictures in it, and in the Creator's Calendar video we've done, there's a lot of pictures in it so that you can see this is legit because I'm not making this up. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if 
we're going seven day week. Say that, let, let's, let's play the tune that most pastors say, this is, the Sabbath is never changed. Agreed, it has us from one new moon to another. But for those that say it's a continuous weekly cycle, you would fall in through this, you would, you would be floating through that. You know, one, one week it might be on A, then the next week on B, then the next week on C, when Sabbath failed, because you're running through this one because it's eight days long, so there's a backup effect. Okay, it's kind of like the Islamic calendar, how that it backs up, right? Uh, through a solar calendar, because it's strictly lunar. This is the first calendar that was in opposition, uh, really, to the, the Creator's appointed times, because Rome ruled the world at that time, the known world. So, you know, if you were a Hebrew Israelite, um, and also if you want to find out who the true Hebrew Israelites are, you can check that link right there. Uh, but if you're a true Hebrew Israelite under the persecution of Rome, you would have been having a struggle trying to keep your appointed times because Rome was an eight-day week, and not only that, it was lunar solar. So you know there was they they were right on line as far as starting a new month, but there's an eight-day compared to a seven. So see, persecution started early. All right, <clears throat> now that is the first extrapolation of the false calendar. Now you'll see Rome, uh, you know, Daniel speaks of that she will seek, it, you know, it will seek to change times and laws. All right, he'll, he'll seek to change times and laws, forgive me. So times is appointed times, you know, calendar, timekeeping principles. And laws, we all know the Ten Commandments, if you look at the Roman Catholic Church, all the ten, you know, the, they've changed commandments, all sorts of stuff, uh, all sorts of abominations. So our enemy, before we go any further, we need to know it is a four-letter word, okay? It also has a king that's always been behind it, all right? And that king's little servant right there, all right? And so this is our enemies, not Lucas. You know, I'm just here for your edification today to help you as a brother and Messiah. Um, I, I don't claim to be... Self-righteous, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner too, in need of a savior, as well as the next man. All right, so that's our enemies, all right? And of course, the false counters that come from. So next up, now this one you can find in the Baths of Titus in Rome, and that is the stick calendar is pretty much what they refer to this. I'll put a link in the video description below because this one's a little hard to find, but it's important because this is the tie-in where that you go from an eight-day Roman calendar, the fasting type calendar, to a seven day type planetary week. So anyway, long story short, thing looks kind of like this, you know, it's got their false deities, you know, that would be worshiped and everything. And so the, the, the week rotates, you know, let's say the SU day, SA day, SAT day. Sorry, I'm trying not to say pay days of the week anymore now that I know the creator's point in times um, and proper timekeeping. So anyway, it, here's where it kicks it. Now all you people out there say, Saturday's the Sabbath, you know, and, and hammer down. I used to be a, uh, an attending person at the Seventh-day Adventist Church when I left the sun-worshipping uh, Protestant church, okay? I've, I've been there, done it. Right? I've, I've seen, I know what's going on here. The SAT day, it used to be the first day of the week in Rome. Ooh, that's a shocker, ain't it? I know. Hold on, it gets worse. So, the sun-worshipping became a big thing. Okay, so it got predominance over that. So eventually, SUN day became the first day of the week, and it stood the test of time from then on up till now, because as we all know, that's the first day of the week. Because that's why a lot of Christians say, well, the Solomonides been transferred the first day of the week because Messiah rose. But yeah, we can't find that in the Ten Commandments. It doesn't say that. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. But hey, my son's gonna come down when he rises, then we'll just transfer it the first day of the week. I'm sorry, I didn't see all that extra you know, writing in the Ten Commandments. It's Sabbath, it's the Sabbath day, all right? So, this calendar stood the test of time for quite a while, all right? But then, after time goes by, Julian calendar, all right? This, and, and the sun worship thing became really um, solid in place with Constantine in 321 AD. And I'll get into the Jewish Book of Knowledge in just a minute because there's an important thing in there about Hill II, who was over the um, people at that time in the uh, what will be referred to as the Jewish society. <clears throat> so the next calendar we go to is the Julian calendar. Now a lot of people are familiar with the Julian calendar. Most people learn about this in school too. You know, pretty much the same layout as we have today, beginning the week as so. 
Okay. And, and that, you know, pretty much would be how that you see it laid out then on the Jim calendar. Now, what happened is the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican and all that figured out later down the road that this was 10 days short. Okay, information in the video description below about this as well. So they figured out this was 10 days short. And so this was corrected under Pope Gregory, the Gregorian calendar. And that's what stood the test of time up to today. Now, the creator, this, this is strictly a solar calendar. Okay, so we went from the fasty lunar solar eight day calendar to a planetary seven day week that SAT day started the first of the week. And then that got transferred to SUM day. And then from there, there was 10 days fixed up um, to bring it back to normal to the Gregorian. So ladies and gentlemen, anybody that'll argue that and say, uh, oh, the Sabbath's never being lost. No, no, that, that, that moon that goes around the sky on this flat geostationary earth that's set in the firmament of the heaven by the most high on Genesis in the very beginning of the Bible, um, that which many people are starting to wake up to the flat earth and coming to the scripture because of that, uh, that hasn't never changed. It's fixed permanent, just like that covenant. Uh, I can't remember the exact verse in the scripture, but the Most High Yah said that, um, you know, I think it was in refer reference to David's throne, that if the moon could be changed, then David's uh, place before him would be changed. You know, it's not. So, this goes to show you right here that you've got many transitions in the calendar that is of man, that is of the beast, which is of Satan. Okay, it's not of the creators of point times. And now if you want to know about the true calendar, we're going to get in that in a minute, but I just want to find, I want to show you what, what you've got to come out of. All right, so eight-day lunar solar calendar. Then it went to the planetary week where the deities were, where we get the names for our modern week from. Then it went to this next calendar, which ended up being 10 days short over the course of a long time. And then the Gregorian calendar finally gets put in place. All right, now... That's four transitions of timekeeping. Are you going to tell me that you're really going to believe that SAT day or SUM day is your Sabbath after that? I mean, really? Now, sit and think about that for a minute and absorb that and tell me that you're, you, you, can, you can really say in your heart that that's right. Now, this is garbage, okay? All this is garbage. All right, now, the Creator's point in time is very simple, all right? And then we're going to go into the Book of Jewish Encyclopedia because history tells us a lot more about this stuff too. Creator's calendar is very simple. Now I'm not gonna argue with a person if you start the new moon after the first visible crescent or if you start at the dawn after conjunction. People are making the effort to serve the most high off. I'm not gonna argue with it. This is what I will point out to you. New moon day is a day all in itself. New moon begins the week, all right? You have six work days, one, Two, three, four, five, and six. Sorry, let me draw my other little block on out here. One. So this is how the calendar of the Most High looks. Now I know you might say, why is number eight here where Sabbath belongs? New moon days, work days, and Sabbaths are all in a class on their own self. Now Ezekiel 46 and one, this, this helped pave this out and also the video links to share. There is three types of days in scripture and it's spoke of many times. There is Sabbaths, new moons, and work days. Work days are not holy days. New moons start the month, okay? They're the day of beginning the new month. And Sabbaths are a day all of themselves. Anytime that we're given a day in scripture that correlates to a Sabbath, it's the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29 days the month. Some months are 29 days long, and some have an extra day, which is a translation day before the new moon. Now people might say, well see, there's not a complete week in between that. It doesn't matter because the new month starts the new month, okay? And I know this is a hard pill to swallow. I mean, I know this is really hard. It was hard for me to accept and understand at first, but it is what happened throughout the course of history. Now you might say, this is garbage, I cannot for the life of me except this. All right, I'm gonna give you a simple, simple task that if you can prove otherwise, you need not worry about the Creator's counter. The Creator plainly bans war on the Sabbath. No war is to be conducted on the Sabbath. No Jew, no Christian, no nobody's gonna argue that point with me. Now, 
if you turn in your scripture, if you don't have a great Bible, Hello Scriptures, right there. That's the name of the Most High Y'all on the cover. It is a wonderful, wonderful collection of scriptures. Inside there, you'll read the Battle of Jericho. It pretty much starts the lead up to it from Joshua chapter 5, uh, verse 13, on up to uh, chapter 6 through 27. Uh, uh, verse Chapter 6 going into all the way through to verse 27. That pretty much covers what everybody always known about the Battle of Jericho. But we, we all know that it began at the second moon, the second month of the year, okay? So second month, and I'm gonna write moon because the word moon, okay, that's where we get month from, okay? All right, and in modern day, you can Wikipedia that, whatever you wanna do, look, and look it up. All right, the one thing that most people don't know is exact time of when the battle began, exact. The book of Yeshar, if you want to look this up, I'm going to also read this to you here on the computer terminal that I have before me. And it says the following, And the manna ceased at that time on the morrow of the Passover, and there was no more manna for the children of Israel. And they ate of the produce of the land of Canaan. And Jericho was entirely closed up against the children of Israel. No one came out or went in. And it was in the second moon, now here we go, on the first day of the moon that Yahweh said to Yohasha, Rise up, behold, I have given Jericho into thy hand. With all the people thereof, all your fighting men shall go around the city once each day. Thus, sorry, forgive me the uh, screen saver went on. Go around the city once each day, thus shall you do for six days. And the priests shall blow upon trumpets, and when you shall hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall give a great shouting, that the walls of the city fall, shall fall down, and all the people shall go up, every man against his opponent. And Yohasha did as a, so according to all Yahweh had commanded. And on the seventh day, you remember that? The seventh day, they went round the city, Seven times, and the priests blew up on trumpets. And at the seventh round, Yohasha said to the people, Shout, for Yahuwah has delivered the whole city into our hands. Only the city and all that it contains shall be accursed to Yahuwah. And keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and brass and iron shall be consecrated to Yahuwah. They shall come into the treasury of Yahuwah. And the people blew up on trumpets and made a great shouting and the walls of Jericho came down and all the people went up, every man, straight before him and they took the city and utterly destroyed all that was in it, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. That's the book of Yeshar chapter 88, okay? So, second moon, first day. There's no prohibition in the Torah against marching around on New Moon Day. You can travel. There's no pro prohibition against it. Prohibition. There we go. Sorry. So, that means New Moon Day. We're going to hash this off. Day one, they started the battle. Now, keep in mind, this is on the Creator's calendar. We don't, we're don't. we not going to have a product of Rome on this board here. Okay, so we move on over. I'll try to line my lines up this time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so let's figure this out real quick. Let's count together, simple math. Day one, new moon day, they walked around. Day two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These are all six work days. This is a day by itself. So there you go, they marched around seven days and those walls came down and a lot of body count got piled up. And what was the next day? A Sabbath to the Most High Yah. You can't find this on your Roman Gregorian calendar. You can't find it on Julian calendar, the stick calendar, the fast day calendar. You can't find it on any of them. You can't find it on the modern day calendar. And your pastor is a liar, okay? He's telling you, SAT day is the Sabbath. No, either he's ignorant, uninformed, or he's a liar. And listen, my pastor, I used to be a deacon in my church. Can you believe that a young man my age? The church saw fit they wanted me to be a deacon and they voted me to be that. I didn't ask to be that, but I wanted to do whatever the will of church was. As I learned a lot with the clergy when I was in SUNDA church, I learned these lies. I learned that they were hiding this truth. 
Then I went on to the Seventh-day Adventist Church and found out that not only do they know about the Creator's Calendar, they use it for biblical prophecy, but they keep the SAT day on the Roman calendar. Now please compute that for me. It gets worse. Messianic congregations, even Hebrew roots fellowships, true Hebrew Israelites coming back to the truth, they will worship on the SAT day or the SUN day, even some, but they won't, and, and they'll even keep the feast of Yah, the appointed times in Leviticus 23. They'll do it by the Creator's calendar, but they'll worship on the seventh day of Rome. I can't, I, ladies and gentlemen, just can't make stuff up, okay? Now, where do we go from here, Luke? All right, well, I'm going to tell you. When you're in Rome, they say, to do as the Romans. Well, I say, when you're in Judaism, in uh, uh, what would be modern-day Judaism, we should figure out what to do as Judaism, but not do it. For what is it that Moshe said? Do all that which they command, but do not as they do, for they say and do not. I'm sorry, that was Messiah said. <laughs> wow. Um, do all that Moshe had commanded, but do not do as they do, for they say and do not forgive me. I misquoted that scripture. Anyway, is if you look in the link that I shared about the Creator's Counter, if you look in it, there is a link to the Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 5, page 410. Now, I have a copy of the Book of Jewish Knowledge. All right, now mine is um, uh, th this excerpt that I'm taking from. So you can also find it in that book. And I also found this one along with it. And I wanted to present this one to you today if you have a chance to get it. I got a hold of mine for a dollar. All right, I'm not trying to sell the book. Just uh, you, if you look for these, ain't, these old writings, you can find them. It says in page 70, here we have the Jewish calendar. I'll get closer where you can see this, hopefully. And it says, the, uh, before the Jewish calendar was finally fixed in 358 CE by the patriarch Hillel II, um, goes on down, the science of astronomy talks about and everything. It says, the main interest of the rabbinic astronomers was to establish with reasonable certainty the beginning of each month, Rosh Kodesh. Thus, they watched intently for the new moon to appear in the sky. For centuries during the time of the Second Temple, the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem had held the sole religious authority to proclaim the beginning of the month when two astronomers called witnesses testified with their own eyes they observed the crescent moon in the sky. Only then did the Sanhedrin dispatch swift messengers in all directions to Judea, Syria, Babylonia, and elsewhere to proclaim the new moon. Torches were lit and fire signals were relayed from peak to peak in the hills of Judea to distant communities. And it goes on and on, but this right here goes to show you um, just, just extracurricular writings outside the scripture, as if the scripture wasn't enough, you know, the book of Yashar wasn't enough with the battle of Jericho, that new moon was when, you know, time was counted off, not, you know, not hashed off on a normal Roman calendar. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, as far as uh, my final notes on that, I want to make sure I don't miss anything here that I was going to tell you. The last thing I want to say on this, now this, I've just scraped the surface of so much that you're going to need to study. There's a great resource. There's a great link for the Creator's Appointed Times calendar app. It's on worldslastchance.com. Um, we have resources at loudcrimeindustries.com to help out, um, especially the Creator, Restoring the Creator's Calendar video to help you get a better foundation of that. In the New Kingdom, time will be kept by the Most High Yah's Appointed Times, not of that Rome's. You can take that to the bank. Um, it is important that we learn this because in the very near future, I fear that laws will be passed in our country, forcing man to worship on the SUN day. Um, I think people that, that try to keep the appointed times, such as myself, it's gonna come under great scrutiny, maybe even die under pain and death. Um, I'm willing to give my life to the Most High Yah. Uh, I'm not worthy of the kingdom. I'm a sinner, and if, if I can pay for it by you know sacrifice, if I have to one day uh, to stand up for the Most High, so be it whatever we have to pay. Uh, just as long as it brings honor to him. Uh, there is a heaven to gain and there is a lake of fire to shine, okay? If you give in to the wishes of the world soon enough and when laws are passed and when the trumpets start and when forced worship is put out on the table, I promise you, the SAT day and the SUN day, all that's garbage. The true point in time is the most high y'all begins with new moon. You count six work days, then a Sabbath. Six work days and a Sabbath, four weeks of that. And that month either ends on the 29th day or an extra day is added for translation. And this is something that you'll have to learn with time. It doesn't come overnight. That detoxing 
Rome out of our mind. It takes time, but I promise you, if you use all the links, if you use all the research I've shared with you, with time, you can bleed that stuff out of your life and get back to the prayers point in time, worshiping him on his set and appointed day. Lastly, I just say, if any, um, if there's any fellowship sitting there out there, if there's any groups of people out there, if I can be a help to you, and you want me to come out and share this information, or if you want me to do a presentation, I don't charge a dime. Just please, just help me with my travel costs to come to you, and if I can be there, I'll be there. I really want the truth out there to the world. Um, it, this, this has been eating away at me a long time. I wanted to make this video um, and really cover this good. I hope this helped you to see you in here Seven Trumps Prepper Channel. As always, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua night.